Hey friends, welcome back to another yoga flow. Today we're going to be focusing on our Bakasana, our crow pose. This is probably the first arm balance that you jump into if you're looking to level up your yoga asanas. It requires quite a lot of strength in the upper body and the wrists and the core and a little bit of mobility within the hips and uh, the legs as well. So it's still quite challenging, but it's a really fun one to play with. Let's get started in a child's pose. So taking the knees wide, bringing the big toes together, and then sinking the hips back and down. Reach the hands forward. Take a big breath in through the nose. Little pause at the top. And then an exhale out of the mouth. And then just start to breathe in and out through the nose. Try to soften the body. Softening the breath, softening the mind. Just landing on our mat, both physically and mentally as well. So if you notice that your thoughts are floating away, that's okay. See if you can gently encourage yourself to come back to the present. This is why we call it a practice. In our yoga asana practice, it's not only a really great way to just learn what our body feels like, but it's also a great way to practice paying attention, practice staying still within the mind as we move our body. And as we move today, I encourage you just to notice if the mind floats, if the breath floats, if we're holding our breath in. If you notice any of those things happening, just seeing if we can let it flow, let those thoughts go. Let's take one more breath before we start to move, really grounding here into our practice. Next inhale, let's start to lift the hands off the ground, maybe a centimeter. As we exhale, bring them around your back, maybe clasping at the heels or slightly forward a little bit more. As we inhale, start to lift the hips off the heels, bring the crown of the head onto the ground, sasangasana, rabbit pose, maybe drawing the knees in slightly if you need. Try round through the upper back, lift the belly into the spine, spread the shoulder blades wide. Inhale here. As we exhale, release the hips towards the heels, bring the hands back forward. Start to lift up through the spine on an inhale. As we exhale, soften the hips down to the ground. Let's take our fingertips wide, lift the elbows. Big breath in as we squeeze the glutes, lift the chest off slightly. As we exhale, drop the left shoulder to the ground, look over the right elbow. As we inhale, find your cobra or a mini cobra here. As we exhale, drop the right shoulder, look over the left. Bring the hands back to your ribs, big breath in as you press through the hands. Find your way back into your balasana, your child's pose. Exhale to ground. Next inhale, lift the hands again and start to draw them behind you, clasping at the heels or maybe further up the leg. Next inhale, we start to lift the hips, bringing the top of the head down to the ground. The eye gaze should be between the feet. Really use that pull of the hands on the feet to draw your shoulder blades up and then away from your ears. Let's bring the hips back down onto the heels for on an inhale. As we exhale, start to bring the hands forward again, ripple through the spine. As we exhale, soften the hips down to the ground. Bring the hands out wide again. Squeeze the glutes on an inhale, lift yourself. As we exhale, drop the left shoulder, look over to the right. Let's inhale to lift back tall. As we exhale, other direction, drop the right, look over to the left. Bring the hands back to your ribs, big breath in as we press up through the hands. As we exhale, sink the hips back and down, finding your child's pose. 
Let's try that one more time. Inhale to lift the hands, sweep them behind, bring them behind, clasping, exhale. Inhale, lift the hips, draw the eye gaze in between the feet. Exhale, maybe round through the upper back a little bit more. Inhale, bring the heels, hips back down to the heels. Exhale, bring the hands forward. Big mobilization here as well. Inhale, ripple up. Exhale as we soften the hips down. Take the hands wide. Let's inhale, squeeze the glutes. Lift yourself just a little bit, not all the way up. Exhale, drop the left shoulder, look over the right. Inhale to lift tall. Exhale, drop the right shoulder, look over the left. Bring the hands by the ribs, big breath in as we lift up. This time let's find our tabletop position. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Let's take a few circles on our wrists here. So circling in one direction. And then maybe the other direction. You might even like to try draw your fingertips towards your knees. Maybe, maybe even the back of the wrist down towards the ground. You can just do one at a time. This is quite a big opener for our forearm. So just take it in your own time. Let's try three more breaths here. We're going to be using our wrist here a lot today. So we want to make sure that they're warmed up in the open. When you're ready, let's find a neutral position again. So draw the shoulders back and down the spine, lift the belly into the spine and then a slight curve of the lower back. We're going to take the right hand to the top left corner of the mat and then start to sink the hips back. So finding a little side bend through the right lat here. Let's inhale, come back up as we exhale, take the left hand over to the right corner of the mat and then soften the shoulders down here. Feeling that lat starting to open. Let's inhale, let's come back up. We're going to bring some heat pretty soon. You can either keep the knees on the ground. If you're feeling ready and strong, you could tuck onto the toes and try to hover the knees off the ground. Just know that you can always drop these knees down as you need, when you need. Next inhale, let's draw the right knee to the nose. Tuck the chin in. As we exhale, send the right foot out, finding that long spine. As we inhale, draw the right knee to the right elbow. Tuck the chin in. As we exhale, send the right toes back, shoulders pull back. Inhale, right knee to nose, round up. And then as we exhale, start to send the hips up and then three-legged dog, reach the right toes high. Soften the left heel down. Try to draw the shoulders square. And then reset the right foot down next to the left. Downward facing dog. Little walk out of the feet. That was quite a strong sensation through the core. When you're ready, start to ripple through the spine on an inhale. As we exhale, either finding your tabletop with the knees down or you can come up and hover with me. Next inhale, let's draw the left knee to the nose. Round through the upper back, push away with the hands. Exhale, send the toes back. Find your extension, long spine. Inhale, right knee, I mean left knee to the elbow. Exhale, extend it back, long spine. Inhale, round it through. This time, extend it up, lift the hips, lift the toes, three-legged dog. Soften the left hip here, soften the knee on the right. When you're ready, bring the left foot down to the ground, a little walk out of the toes of the feet. Maybe dropping the hips from one side and then to the other. Next inhale, let's walk our feet up towards our hands. Find your forward fold. Feet together or slightly apart, totally up to you. Soften the knees here. Lay your belly along the thighs. Draw the chin in towards your chest. Next inhale, hands come to shins. Halfway lift. Lift the shoulders in line with the hips and then exhale, let it go. Inhale to ripple through the spine, lift the arms. 
as you exhale, bring the hands behind you, clasp the hands together, draw the knuckles down towards the ground, open through the heart space. A few rounds of Serie A. Inhale, lift the arms, Urdhva Hasasana. Exhale, dive it forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, shoulders pull back. As we exhale, plant the hands, first round, step back, Shataranga, bending the elbows all the way down to the belly. Inhaling, baby cobra, pull the shoulders back, squeeze glutes. As we exhale, tuck onto the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Shwanasana. One breath here. Soften the heels, bend the legs. Next, inhale, we can step, we can hop in between our hands. Exhale to fold forward. As we inhale, halfway lift, look forward slightly. As we exhale, soften. Inhale, bend the legs, ripple through the spine, lift the arms, lift the eye gaze. As we exhale, bring the hands by, behind the back, draw the knuckles down to the ground. Inhale to open again, lift the arms. Exhale, dive it forward, send the heart space towards your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. As we exhale, plant the hands to the ground. You can step through your shataranga or you can jump back. <laughs> Inhaling, upward facing dog. Please, please, <laughs> draw the shoulders back. Please do this. <laughs> exhale, downward facing dog. What I'm doing are just suggestions. They're not, <laughs> they're not demands or anything. You can do whatever you want to do. Next, inhale, let's step, or we can hop in between our hands. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale to ripple through the spine, lift the arms. Exhale, bring the hands behind the back, squeeze the glutes, draw the knuckles down. One more time. <clears throat> inhale, <laughs> reach the arms. As we exhale, dive it forward. Use your breath, inhale, open high, halfway. Exhale, place the hands down, step or jump back through your shataranga, bend the elbows, bring them by your ribs. Inhaling to open, Urdhva Mukha Shonasana. Exhaling, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Shonasana. One breath, breathing in, breathing out through the mouth. Let it go. You can stay here, or if you feel warm enough, you can draw the elbows down towards the ground, finding your dolphin pose. Big shoulder opener here. Try to bring your eye gaze in between your legs. Think about drawing the chest through towards your thighs, pressing through the elbows. Next, inhale, start to lift the elbows off the ground. If you're in your dolphin, sweep the right toes up towards the ceiling, three-legged dog. Hold here, exhale. Let's inhale, lift a little taller, draw the right hip down. As we exhale, draw the right knee to the right elbow, hold here. Inhale, let's step the right foot in front of the left, drop the heels towards the left, big breath in as we lift into our side plank, Bashisthasana. Left knee can come down here, or if you wanted a little bit more, we could take the right foot off the ground. Breathe in. Everyone, let's look down towards the top of the mat. As we exhale, let's take the right foot towards the top, place it where the right hand would have been. Find your side, uh, your twisted lunge here. So reach the right hand towards the ceiling. Big breath in. And then breathe out. Well done. Let's bring the, thing, the right fingers around the right toes, the right big toe, and then step your left foot where your left hand was. Take the left fingers, piece fingers around the left toe. Big breath in, soften your legs as much as you need. As we exhale, turn the toes out slightly, sink the hips down, malasana. You might be a little higher, we might be a little bit lower. We can use the pull of the toes as a way to draw the crown of the head up towards the ceiling and the hips down towards the ground. Maybe the elbows press into the insides of the legs as well. Shoulders pull back. One more breath. Next inhale, let's lift the hips up. 
Exhale to fold forward, release the hands, keep the feet wide. Inhale, halfway lift, option here to reach the hands forward, keep that long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale to ripple through the spine, lift the arms above your head. Let's exhale and bring the hands behind the back, draw the knuckles down towards the ground. Let's inhale, lift the hands. Exhale, turn the toes back out slightly and drop the hips back into our malasana or wherever you can go today, keeping that long spine. Bring the hands to the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the hips, lift the collarbones. As we exhale, bring the hands to the ground. Step or jump back through your sataranga. Inhaling to open. Exhaling to send it back. Option at any point, if you need, is to come into a child's pose whenever we're doing our downward facing dog. I would highly encourage you to listen to your body. So if every, anything that I'm offering isn't for you today, if your body isn't wanting to go there, please just listen and just do what it wants to do, whether that's more rest. If you want to stay in your downward facing dog, you can. Otherwise, you can draw the elbows down towards the ground, finding your dolphin pose. Try to lift the tailbone up towards the ceiling, soften the knees. Next inhale, let's start to lift the elbows off the ground, sweep the left toes high, three-legged dog. Exhale, hold here, draw the left hip down, soften the right heel. Inhale. As we exhale, shift forward, draw the left knee to the left elbow, hold. As we inhale, start to drop the right heel towards the side, left foot step, steps in front, either taking the left foot off or you can drop the right knee down. Totally up to you what you would like to do here. Breathe in. As we breathe out, start to look towards the top of the mat. Take a big step forward with your left foot. Turn onto the right toes. Lift the left hand towards the ceiling. Lunge, twist. When you're ready, shift the hand down towards the ground. Take the peace fingers around the big toe. And then step the right foot, replacing where the right hand was. Peace fingers around the right big toe. Inhaling to open. As we exhale, soften into your malasana. Sink your hips back and down. Draw the shoulder blades back. One more breath here. Finding that hip mobility required for our bakasana. Next, inhale, halfway lift. Turn the toes in slightly. Exhale, folding forward, release the hands. Inhaling, bending the legs, lifting the arms above the head. Urdhvahastasana. As we exhale, hands come behind the back, draw the knuckles down towards the ground, open through the heart. Inhale to lift the arms. As we exhale, turn the toes out, sink the hips back and down. Malasana with the hands up. We can bring our hands down whenever we need. Bring the hands down. Lift the hips, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, either straight back into a down dog or a child's pose, or you can flow through your vinyasa. Using your breath to move. One or two breaths in our Adho Mukha Svanasana. Next, inhale, let's start to ripple through the spine. Find our way into a plank. As we exhale, bend the elbows, come halfway. Inhale, press back up into our plank. We can drop our knees down here if we need. Exhale, lower halfway, tuck the ribs in. The elbows into ribs. Inhale to lift up. Last time, exhale halfway. This time, come all the way down to the belly and release the toes. Well done. Bring the hands wide. Tent up the fingertips. Elbows high. Inhale, squeeze the glutes. Lift. As we exhale, draw the left shoulder to the ground. Look over the right elbow. Inhale to lift. Exhale, drop the right shoulder. Look over the left. Let's release the hands back to our ribs, but this time we're going to find our way into a plank. So elbows under our plank or hover, elbows underneath shoulders, start to lift the hips up onto your knees. If that feels good, you could tuck onto the toes and lift the knees off the ground here. So tailbone draws down towards the feet, 
Hips are in line with our shoulders as much as we can. Remember, we can always bring our knees down here. When you are ready, you can stay here. Or if you wanted to, you could take the right knee to the right elbow or as high as you can. And then take it back. One more time with the left. Big breath in as we lift the left knee as high as we can. Maybe it taps. And then exhale, send it back. Either bringing the knees down or keeping them off. Try press through the hands. Maybe one elbow lifts at a time or maybe both lift. Bring the hands back under the shoulders. And then send the hips back. Downward facing dog or child's pose, whatever you would like to do. A little bit of strength for our upper body. Either staying in your down dog or you can find your way into your dolphin, drawing the elbows down towards the ground. Breathe in. Exhale, try to pull the chest through a little bit more. Start to lift the elbows off the ground if you're in your dolphin. Big breath in, lift the right toes high, three-legged dog. As we exhale, shift forward, draw the right knee to the right elbow. Inhale as we drop the heel towards the left, maybe keeping the foot off, maybe touching it down in front of the left, or maybe dropping the left knee. We've been here before. Breathe in, open. As we exhale, look forward, take a big step forward with the right foot. Find your lunge, twist. This time we're gonna bring the right hand down to the ground, start to pivot towards the left side of the mat. Feet are wide here, toes turn in. Let's take a big breath in, halfway lift. As we exhale, soften yourself down. Now if your forehead or your kind of the head can touch the ground, means that your stance is probably a little bit too wide. So bring it in a little bit more. Likewise, if you're feeling this is quite tight, take your feet a little bit wider. Keep the knees bent slightly and shift the weight forward into your toes. So we're letting the, the length of the hamstrings engage here. Let's walk our hands forward slightly, plant them onto the ground, take the fingertips wide. Now try to lift onto your toes, round through the upper back, just like we were in that Sasangasana or rabbit pose. You might stay here, or you might gently just shift the weight forward slightly until you really have to press the fingertips and the knuckles into the ground to catch, and then shift back. We'll try that a few more times. So big breath in to shift forward, rounding through the upper back, protracting the shoulder blades wide, and come back. Just try that a few more times using your breath. Try to draw the elbows back behind you as well. And that's going to help you lock into your upper body. Let's try one more time. If you're feeling you've got that juice in you. And then shift it back. Beautiful. Lower the heels down to the ground. Let's take the, the forehead back down. Just bring your hands into wrists and gently roll out. Your hands into wrists, hands into fists, and roll them out. There we go. Let's br bring the hands back down to the ground. Walk yourself towards your right foot. Bring them on the, to the inside of the right foot. Then take a big step back. Big breath in. Optional vinyasa here, but you can always send it straight back. One breath. either dropping the elbows down or staying up. Find your pose which works for you today. Breathe in. Breathe out, try to soften. If you're in your dolphin, start to lift the elbows. Big breath in, lift the left toes up towards the ceiling. Three like a dog, soften the left hip bone down. As we exhale, draw the left knee to the left elbow. Inhale to step back, drop the right heel towards the right side of the mat. Find your Vashti Sasana, your side plank. Whatever option works for you, challenges you, fires you. Breathe in. As we exhale, look to the top of the mat. Take a big step forward with the left foot. Find your lunge twist. So turn your heart space towards your left thigh. Left hand reaches tall. 
bring the left hand down towards the side of the left foot. Start to shift your weight to the right side of the mat. This time, walk your feet in so they're about hip width distance or a little bit further. Take your peace fingers around your big toes, breathe in, try to lengthen through the spine halfway. As we exhale, soften the hips down into our malasana again. So we're finding this, this asana quite a bit during this practice. And it's gonna allow us to find that deep hip and knee flexion that's gonna allow us to get into our crow pose. Let's try one more breath. Keep drawing the shoulders back, pressing the elbows slightly into the legs. Next, inhale, start to lift the hips, halfway lift. As we exhale, soften. Walk the feet back out, release the hands. Next, inhale, let's walk our hands over towards the left foot. Let's step the left foot back, find your plank. Inhale here. Exhale, flow through your vinyasa, or you can step it straight back. Downward facing dog. Next inhale, roll through the spine. Find your way to your plank. As we exhale, bend the elbows lower halfway. Next inhale, push back high. Exhale, lower. Inhale to push, lock the core in. One more time. Inhale, lower. Then find your way all the way down to the ground. Release the toes, release the hands. Maybe a little roll out of the wrists. When you're ready, take your fingertips right wide, lift the elbows. Let's inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, soften the left shoulder down, look over the right. Inhale to lift. Exhale, drop the right shoulder, look over to the left. If you feel ready, bring the hands by the ribs. No plank this time, but we're going to find a shataranga all the way up to our plank. You can either tuck your toes, lift the knees, or you can keep the knees grounded. Up to you. Draw the tailbone down. Big breath in to lift. And then as we exhale, downward facing dog. Let's draw the knees down to the ground. Keep the toes tucked if you can. Send the hips back onto the heels. If this ever feels too intense through the back of the toes or the heels, untuck your toes. Bring your hands together and then just do a little wave through your wrists in one direction and then maybe the other direction. Deep breaths here, reconnecting, regrounding, just bringing a little bit of slowness. Let's take one more breath. Draw the shoulders back, release the hands. When you're ready, find your way back into your tabletop, untuck the toes, a little tap of your feet here. Well done. Tuck onto the toes, lift the hips, find your way to a downward facing dog. When you're ready, take a few steps forward with your feet. Feet come wider than your hands. Let's find our malasana again. So dropping the hips, hanging out here. Now you can totally stay here or if you are feeling ready to try and have a go, let's find our pakasana. If you already know where to go, just totally go there. If you are new, more new to this arm um, balance, you want to lift the hips as high as you can, maybe even lifting the heels as well. You want to find that length. You can also place a block underneath your feet and that gives you a little bit more height. Try place the hands underneath your shoulders, spread your fingertips wide. You're going to start to bend the elbows back towards your knees and you're wanting to find your knees somewhere along the back of the arms. I tend to find there's like a back, there's a little ridge at the bottom of your elbows. It kind of feels good and it's going to take a really long time to try and find where the best spot is. So don't fret if you can't find it. So you might start to shift the weight forward, maybe lifting one foot off and then tapping it down, maybe lifting the other foot off, tapping it down. 
And if you feel like you need to or want to, just shake out the wrists. And then maybe eventually, after a lot of practice, because it does take practice, you might find yourself into a full bakasana. Now you want to make sure that the eye gaze is below you. So we're using the counterbalance so we don't fall back and we don't come forward. So eye gaze beneath you, lifting the belly, scooping the belly as high into the spine as we can, really rounding through the upper back. That's what's going to keep our muscles activated through the upper shoulders and just keeping us afloat. If you want to have a little bit more of a play, let's try three more breaths. If you're feeling ready to rest, you can find a forward fold or a child's pose. Let's find our way back into our balasana when you're ready. So taking the knees wide, softening the hips back and down. Maybe here, just turning your palms so that face each other, clasp the hands into fists and then gently draw the knuckles in and then out. A lot of work on forearms and wrists. So if they feel tight, that's okay. Just like any muscle, they take a little bit of work to get used to. I'm going to start to slow things down now. We've done a lot of work today. Let's soften and reconnect. Next inhale, let's start to shift the weight forward. Find your tabletop, knees over hips, under hips, and then take a big step forward with both hands. Soften the heart down towards the ground. Find your puppy pose. The forehead might tap, it might be hovering. If you feel like you've got quite a bit of space, you might start to lift your eye gaze here. Maybe the chin grazes the ground. A few breaths here. Big extension through the spine. Next inhale, let's gently ripple through the spine, lower the hips down to the ground, lower the belly to the ground. Let's extend the left hand to out to a T, right hand comes by the ribs, draw the right toes up towards the ceiling and then start to shift the weight. So our right foot comes up and over, maybe touching down behind the left leg, right knee points up. I want to be feeling a twist through the spine, maybe a bit of opening through the hips as well as that deep stretch through the chest. If you don't feel anything through the chest, maybe wiggle the hands up a little bit more and see if that does anything. You can stay here. Option here is to take the right foot behind the right glute, maybe taking the right hand around it and finding a little bit of a quad stretch. So squeezing the glutes, drawing the knees close together. One more breath. And then gently releasing the foot down to the ground. Let's try the other side. So gently roll yourself over and then extend the right hand out to a T. Draw the left toes high. Press through the right, the left hand, placing the left foot behind the right thigh. Remembering as you need to, you can wriggle your right hand up. If you're wanting more, just gently pressing the left knee out a little bit further. Maybe pressing a little bit more into your left hand. Now you can stay here if you wanted to. You could take your left hand to your left foot. Gently drawing both knees close together. Squeezing the glutes, finding a little opening through the quad.
Just try one more breath here. And then just drawing the left foot back down to center. Let's bring the elbows underneath the shoulders. Find your plank again, either on the knees or on the toes, just for a few seconds. And then maybe the feet walk up close to you, lifting the hips high, finding your dolphin pose. Drawing the chest towards the thighs, bending your knees here, shifting the shoulders up the spine. One more breath. And then softening the knees down to the ground. Let's cross over the feet. Find your way into a Sukhasana or an easy pose, cross-legged. But then take your hands behind you. Try to lift the hips off the ground. Drop the knees towards the front. Open through the heart space. Maybe the head goes behind you. Squeeze the glutes. One more breath. And then releasing down towards the ground. Let's take our feet out wide. So you can either stay on your mat or you can take them off the mat. Totally up to you. Try to draw the knees up towards the ceiling, toes up towards the ceiling. The knees might have a bent or they might be a little bit straighter. Let's inhale, try to lift tall. And then exhaling, we might walk ourselves forward. I say might because you might find it more comfortable to stay with your hands behind you. Otherwise, you might be able to walk your elbows down Maybe the chest down. Find a few deep breaths here. Maybe when we slow things down, you might like to notice where your mind goes. Reminding ourselves that we are practicing trying to pay attention and engaging with the present. So practicing that drawing back, the coming back. Let's take one more breath here. Next inhale, let's walk ourselves back. Exhale to lift tall. Let's inhale and lift the right hand up towards the ceiling. Left hand extends along the left leg. Exhale, side bent. To open the right shoulder back, left shoulder through. Maybe lifting the eye gaze towards the ceiling. Next inhale, let's come up. As we exhale, left hand comes up and over right elbow. Right hand comes to the inside of the leg, gently revolving our heart space. Next, inhale, rolling ourselves up, maybe scooching ourselves a little bit more forward on the mat. Feel free to put on something warm if you would like. Otherwise, just gently rolling down the spine. Once we're there, bring the soles of the feet together, taking the knees apart, finding our Supta Baddha Konasana. Staying here for a few breaths. You're welcome to stay here if this feels really comfortable for our Shavasana. Or if you want to extend the legs, maybe using the arms to gently press your knees back together and then extending both of the legs long. Any other movements or postures that your body would like to do in the meantime, you're more than welcome to. We're just going to find a little bit of stillness here.
Noticing if there are any places in the body, places in the mind where you can soften and let go. reflecting on your practice that it's just been and if there have been any shifts any openings in the body in the mind in the heart and while you're reflecting on this perhaps you start to take a deeper breath in through the nose out through the nose or mouth Perhaps starting to move a little bit, maybe wiggling the toes, wiggling the fingertips. It's really moving in any way that your body is calling for. Not trying to think about it too much. When you are ready, maybe by rolling onto your side for a few breaths or maybe rolling through the spine, let's find a way into our seated position, our sukhasana. Maybe closing down the eyes once we've arrived in that position. Lifting tall through the spine, opening through the heart. Bringing hands to heart center. Acknowledging yourself, thanking yourself for doing something so good for you, for your body, for your mind, just to practice and to play. We're not going to get it perfect every time. And that's why we just turn up. That's the most important part. Thank you, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful class and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever and wherever, whenever that is. I will see you again next time. Namaste.